former drummer for the singer's all-girl band, is accusing Beyonce of, get this, extreme witchcraft and magic spells. To grooming their daughter, and of course Jay-Z saying nothing. It makes you wonder who's really wearing the pants in that relationship. Does, does Jay-Z actually have a, a say, or does he get to do what he wants to do until the queen says don't? If I were to have you evaluate two people and you tell me which one you think is worse, I would like to hear your answer. The two people we're talking about is Sean Combs and Jay-Z. Which of the two would you deem worse than the other? Now, if your answer was to say, oh, Puffy by far, man, there's so much stuff on Puff. And the worst that Jay-Z has ever come across is the fact that he was a drug dealer and maybe his rap music. I would venture to tell you that you probably ain't digging deep enough into what Jay-Z's been doing as compared to what Puff's been doing. Because if you think that Puffy was bad, maybe you need a little bit of a wake up call as to what Jay-Z had been doing. Now, the names that you keep hearing around Puffy are people like Justin Bieber, and you might hear um, his girlfriend and his ex-wife, and you might hear a bunch of these adult females. But you, when they start, of course, they were in their younger years, 17, 18. But then you got people like Jay-Z, okay? Um, Aaliyah, he had his ties with Aaliyah, and she ended up being, of course, unalived in a plane crash under the age of 17. You have people like Tia Marie, under the age of 16 you got people like foxy brown under the age of 17 you got people like rihanna under a certain age and you see a pattern developing the theory has been out there that maybe jay-z has had his hand in more than just the mogul dipping bowl that he's also dabbled in what is famous in hollywood which is what child abuse maybe even trafficking we have a bunch of these uh, artists that made it to fame by signing with Jay-Z. Some of them have since come forward saying, hey, he had us do some really crazy things. Some of you even come forward, well, he had me on the label and then because I started dealing with other people, he dropped me. Or I thought I was the next big thing only to find out that his wife didn't like it and so I got blackballed because of it. Or you have women now coming forward that Jay-Z made passes at me in order to get signed. I needed to sleep with him when I was 16. But he's made a quite a squeaky clean, and in by the world standards, obviously, a very squeaky clean character of himself. Yeah, I used to be on the streets and I used to peddle drugs, but now I'm clean cut and I, I'm a mogul and I know how to make money and I'm rich. Okay. And meanwhile, your entire career was based on all illegal activities, including, and not alone, children. So, again, I'll ask the question, which one do you think was worse? While Puffy was an abusive, I don't know, want to say what else he was, but he was an abusive man with his relationships, and he may have dabbled in the um, same-sex attraction field. One cannot negate that his counterpart, Jay-Z, is as bad, if not worse, because of the clientele that he entertained. Now, we all know that his partner in crime is no slacker when it comes to her evil doing as well. Everything from being accused of witchcraft. A former drummer for the singer's all-girl band is accusing Beyonce of, get this, extreme witchcraft and magic spells. To grooming their daughter and, of course, Jay-Z saying nothing. It makes you wonder who's really wearing the pants in that relationship. Does, does Jay-Z actually have a, a say or does he get to do what he wants to do until the queen says don't? Could it be that she does the recruiting of all these young ladies because people think he'd help Beyonce, he can help me. And then he gets the chance to season them, bring them into the fold. And if the person does not threaten Beyonce, she says, you can go ahead and sign that one. Or if there's a threat, we're not signing that one. Or if I think you're getting too close to that one and could replace me, you're going to cut ties with that one. Meaning Beyonce is okay with being a, you know, child attracted person without being one in the public light. Could it be that between Jay-Z and Puff Daddy, 
that the real linchpin between all of them is somebody behind both. I'm, I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying that. I said could be. Remember, this is all hearsay. I'm not. You know, we don't know. I mean, we don't have any facts of any kind other than what they say. So what we're talking about here is something a little bit more than just a moral conundrum. This is are they above the law? There have been complaints by underage girls about both of these men. Neither one of them have served any time for those complaints. Why? Because they have influence. The same reason it took forever for people like Harvey Weinstein to be arrested. Why? Influence. Now, take Harvey Weinstein as a producer and amplify his image to the level that people like Jay-Z and Puff have. Worth billions. You have record labels. And somebody who's growing up wants to become a music artist. And they're really good. And they get the ear of somebody who knows Jay-Z. Female, by the way. And they said, I can get you in front of Jay-Z. But if you really want to make it, you have to do what he says because he knows how to make marketing happen. Jay-Z comes to you and says, yeah, I, I could sign you. And he signs you with the caveat that he has all access to you. Do you know how many naive young girls will take that offer? One, they're getting the chance of a lifetime. And secondly, Jay-Z is asking them to sleep with him. It's a major pull. And when you don't have parents that care for you, this is not only a major pull. It's a for sure done deal. This is money in the bank. And all I have to do is that bet. Underage, though. So who's worse? At least Puffy so far has relegated his activities to the adults. I mean, there could be. Hey, I'm not putting anything past Puff at this point. There could be children in his past as well. I mean, if you count, I guess, Justin Bieber as one and Usher. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he does, doesn't he? Ain't that something? Ain't that something? But his is mostly males. That's another thing that we're not going to talk about with Puffy. We've covered that already. We're trying to make a comparative thing here between him and Jay-Z. See, while Jay-Z gets away with a whole lot more, and it might just be it's Puffy's time to get, you know, exposed, and Jay-Z might be next on the list. But who's going to do it? I'm waiting to see the next person to come forward saying they know something. When that happens, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that this is a, a, the beginning of the crash of the entire empire that we call rap music. The two head honchos get taken down in one year. That'd be amazing. And I know we ought not to compare evils because it's all the same. But for the sake of comparison and letting you know that one may not be as clean as the other, we had to do this. Was Aaliyah a victim of not just a predator, but one who would go so far as to end her life in order to cover up what he was doing? And it seemed like he may have gotten away with it. Because no one was ever brought up on any kind of charges of anything nefarious done to Aaliyah. Regardless of the circumstances around it. The same way we thought that when Porter died, no one would ever think anything ill about it. Even though one or two rumors might have surfaced, nothing was really done to include Puff in it. They both knew how to hide their tracks. One just happened to hide it so well that he became a billionaire from it. The other's time is up. The question only now remains is this. Is Jay-Z next to fall?